Okay. A few weeks ago, with my friends, we had an experiment. Uh, we put a big yellow circle on a sidewalk, and um, we started to film it. My actors, my actors, uh, our actors, they mm, started to walk on that walk, uh, walk side, and they tried to avoid the yellow circle at the point of uh, yellow circle. They avoided it, and they didn't trample on the yellow circle. As a result, many people did the same thing. They avoided the yellow circle, and they didn't trample on it. <laughs> as well as the dog, you know. <laughs> OK. Um, it seems like a ridiculous uh, scenario that makes us laugh, um, like a candid camera designed to make us laugh, and not a demonstration of how we as human beings actually behave. Each one of us likely imagined that we would have passed over the yellow circle and no, we would have passed over the yellow circle and not avoiding it. And you probably uh, are thinking that I will never do the same thing that everyone else is doing. But probably it's not like that. We will do what everyone else is doing. A lot of research describes our everyday actions and our everyday behaviors, and it describes that it shows that we, as human beings, have similar reactions. Uh, we conform to a small group of people or a, so a whole society uh, as well. Uh, in other words, we have, uh, we have the tendency to follow, actually. It shows that uh, we would have avoid the yellow circle, uh, mimicking other people's reactions without knowing even why. This is what we call conformity. Conformity is uh, matching our be beliefs uh, and attitudes and behaviors uh, to group norms, rules, and expectations. Actually, these group rules uh, are implicit, unsaid, and shared by a group of individuals. This group of individuals' interactions are guided by these rules in small groups or in a whole society as well. So, one. Um, I must say that we, including myself, we don't even notice the action of uh, conformity in our everyday life. Uh, these yellow circles that we avoid a crossing over, they are not as apparent to us. Uh, and we conform as an unconscious action. We don't know that we conform. So, why does conformity exist? Uh, this is our deeply, uh, th it's deeply inside us. We deeply conform unconsciously, like a na second nature of us. So. Uh, what is the use of conformity? Actually, we conform also in the um, case of danger. Uh, it saves us from danger. We can translate this action in a natural act of um, survival. So that's why we conform societies, cities, and families to, um, to be protected and to be loved. So we need to understand also how to um, use the benefits of common groups. Uh, in, in the um, case of danger, when you see a building in fire, uh, when you see the people are running away from a fire, you don't need to see the fire. You have to conform to people and run and save your life. So this is why conformity exists. But what makes this very unconscious, most unconscious action, as, uh, action as of everyday life a devil of our times. Before answering this question, I would say uh, I would like to analyze some examples. And I will give you some examples of these yellow circles that we avoid passing over of our daily lives. Uh, in this way, we hopefully understand the concept better. And we, we will see together gradually the harmfulness that lies beneath these unconscious actions of our everyday life. So, 
let's, uh, let's imagine that it's Saturday night, and I want to go out with my friends, and I want to go to a disco. Uh, I usually don't smoke, but all my friends, they do. Um, after a round of uh, dancing happily, everybody wants to go out and have a smoke. I really need some fresh air, and I want to be with them. I, I go out with them, we start chatting, and they start smoking. After a minute of chatting with them, I ask them if I may boom a cigarette, and I start smoking. So, this is the yellow circle in front of me. I don't like smoking, I don't smoke. But uh, I feel that my behavior might be slightly different from my peers, so uh, it bothers me. And uh, in order to be cool, and to uh, avoid my friend's judgment, I pretend that I enjoy smoking with them, and I start smoking. I'm scared to be rejected uh, from the group, and I want to be identified as a member of this group. This is why I conform. Let's jump into the second scenario. I usually go around with a group of artists and art critics. I appreciate a lot their mm, perspective towards art, and I began to be interested in them uh, by the revolutionary way of making and seeing the world of art. So, at first, I preferred to be simply a listener, allowing myself to learn more. Uh, I believe that they know uh, they are well educated and they are very informed about what they discuss, so I prefer to be silent or agree with them most of the times. All of the times. <laughs> <laughs> so last week happened something strange, not strange for me, because it happens all the time for me. We went to a, an exhibition of an artist. Uh, I really liked the show. I really appreciated the research that was behind the artworks of that artist. Uh, what happens? Um, after, as soon as we leave the um, exhibition, all of my group members, they start to give a negative opinion of the show. At first, I thought uh, they are too critical considering the quality of the show. Uh, but but uh, gradually, I changed my mind. I, gradually, I started to doubt my opinion. Uh, so it's eventually my turn to give my opinion. I start to tell them that I didn't like the show as well. This is my yellow circle in front of me. So in this case, it's my opinion that I could have uh, expressed clearly. But in this very case, I actually gradually changed my opinion, but not because I was in more informed of their reasons, but because I blindly accept their uh, opinion as a correct one without being more informed. So this is internalization conformity. It means that uh, privately and publicly we change their, our behavior and privately we agree with them. We gradually change our opinion without being more informed. Uh, it occurs most of the time when a person lacks of knowledge or self-esteem and looks at the group for a guidance, or uh, a person is in an unclear situation and compares his behavior to the group's behavior. So I must say that it's much more difficult not to conform to the group that you, are, you ident identify yourself with. And it's not uh, that much hard not to conform with a group that you don't believe in. It, this is the real hard part. Uh, with these two examples, um, we understood that uh, conformity is something that happens in our everyday uh, life unconsciously, and it changes our mm, uh, decisions in many levels. Uh, it can change our mm, buying habits uh, inspired by advertising to the changing behaviors and uh, in our small groups. Uh, but what if the conformity uh, happens in this large scale of society? What if conformity the result of our conformity becomes harmful for the large scale of people. 
Let's see the latest situation in Europe, the influx of refugees in Europe. In this case, uh, regardless to our, to our personal opinion, uh, this case is a very delicate issue. We are uh, talking about people's destiny, so it is important who, uh, which idea we are conforming to. Uh, if, what if our um, ideas are influenced by media and social networks? For example, in social networks, a certain idea can go viral uh, and it can be repeated many times. So it is much more easy, much more easy to conform to an idea which has been uh, repeated many times. Unconsciously, we conform to an idea that we have heard of uh, more, heard of it more than other ideas. Uh, we are not talking about changing behaviors like smoking or something like that. We are talking about people's destiny in this case. Uh, they might have names, they have husbands, wives, or children. Maybe one of them is uh, preferred cinema rather than theater. One of them may be better in mathematics in her class. Uh, the other in geography. So we are talking about people exactly like us. They are exactly like, what, like us. But what if we conform to the um, idea of um, hatred and superiority uh, without knowing their names and their hobbies? They have hobbies like us. Um, we can change destinies families and uh, futures by our individual uh, conforming to the bigger idea of separation, you know? Exactly what happened in the previous pre-World uh, War society in Germany, once uh, the con uh, conformity to the uh, philosophy of superiority conducted us to the biggest crime of the history. So, um, in this case, since uh, superiority is a characteristic that it's not dead in every one of us, so it is possible still to, for each, uh, each individual to conform to a similar idea that is apparently convincing, because superiority is not dead in every one of us. Uh, this is how conformity works. Every individual thinks that uh, he or she didn't commit the error by itself, by himself or by herself, but uh, in fact, everyone that commits the error to conform to such a big idea has its own part. We have our own parts and we have to be very careful. So, we understood that conformity it can be a very important and delicate issue. What can we do? What are the essential elements that can help us avoiding uh, to conform uh, inappropriately? What are these elements? I provide you some solutions that I think they may help us, including myself, uh, to change our behaviors in, and attitudes, attitudes in our everyday actions. The first of all, I think awareness is really important. To be aware of that we, as human beings, have the tendency and vulnerability to conform. This awareness can help us to avoid and to defend ourselves better against it. The second thing is to think. Thinking before any action and any statement, verbal statement. Take your time. Before any action, take your time. Do not act immediately. At least long enough to ask yourself, what am I doing? What is my real opinion and values in this case? Uh, thinking in this way before any action requires also a healthy critical view towards any groups, even in the group that you trust in and you identify yourself with. The other thing that is really important is self-esteem. Your opinion might be the voice of an important change in your group. You have to know that, you, you, we have to be aware that um, 
it's so normal, it's normal to have different uh, point of views in a group. Actually, it's not normal to have the same way of thinking in the same groups. So give, your vo give a voice to your opinions and let uh, changes be happen. The other thing that comes after self-esteem is courage. To have courage to be yourself publicly. Uh, believe me, this is the f uh, important thing, uh, and this is the most satisfying uh, issue, to be yourself uh, publicly. If a group doesn't accept you in the way you are, it might be the wrong group. So if you have the courage to express yourself as you are, uh, probably uh, you will find your place, uh, place uh, sooner or later. The other thing that is to remember, to remember the fatal implication of conformity in our history, and also to acknowledge, to acknowledge the courageous efforts of nonconformist people. Let's remember Rosa Parks, who remained seated in her place that was assigned for white people. And she didn't conform to the idea of se segregation and infer inferiority of Afro-Americans. Let's remember Gandhi, that with his nonviolent uh, politics, he inspired many, including Martin Luther King, Nelson Mandela, Aung San Suu Kyi, and they really changed sin significant rules in their societies. And they continue to inspire many, many people who want to have their own ideas and they want to be truthful their, to their own ideas. Let's remember Jesus, a young man who knew to love and to help the poor and outcast people, contrary to the laws of that time, unsaid laws of that time. Let's remember John Lennon, who imagined a world without boundaries, without countries, and nothing to kill or die for. Let's remember Malala Yousafzai, a little child, Pakistani child, who didn't give up for children's education in Pakistan and the whole world, and she, even when she was shot in her head by Talibanis. So, what are we going to do? It's our turn. What about practicing to be the person who changes small things in our small groups, with our colleagues, in our everyday actions? Let's practice it together. <laughs> Let's jump into the yellow circle. Thank you. Good job.